Hey everyone, it's Christy aka Cuckadoodles and this is my TBR or to be read video for May. These are the books I will be hoping to read in the month of May. Let us begin. I'm trying to use libraries more since they're free and they're a fantastic resource and they kind of need more support in this day and age so ugh, most of these are from the local library. This first book is Domino Your Guide to a Stylish Home. Domino is like an interior design decorating magazine and they've put together this beautiful looking book. I've just seen like everyone have this book and like share it on their Instagram and everything. So I, I, I was persuaded and checked it out in the library. If you've watched my previous TBR videos, you'll have noticed I'm kind of like interested in interior design and stuff, but also have been very annoyed at the unaffordability of interior design, like ideas that they give to you. This one, I think it's more of a just like how to like train your eye and like teach you about style and stuff which is what I'm interested in, in learning at the moment. They're magazine editors so they really know how to like lay out a book and lay out a page. Next up is Alexander McCall Smith's Corduroy Mansions. I've been trying to read his 44 Scotland uh, Street books. Basically like I read the first one and it took me months and months and months to find the second book and to date it's been like four years I still have not found the third book in libraries or secondhand shops and it's really annoying. So I've completely stalled at number two and like I don't, like I could, but I don't want to skip ahead. So I'm just kind of like waiting until it surfaces somewhere. So I picked up Corduroy Mansions. It's set in London, similar to um, 44 Scotland Street. Those were short stories published in a newspaper uh, like every day or every week or so. And then people would like pick it up, read the story, and then like they'd wait for the next week to or the next day to continue on the story and this one it was published on the Telegraph website and it had 100 episodes and now it's finally in like a book form. What McCall Smith tends to do is create like these really rich characters and they're always really like fun to read and engage with and they kind of like stick with you and stick with your head and it's his, his writing style is cozy, is the way I can best describe it. Like you would like curl up with a blanket and a cup of tea and one of his books. Next up are two non-fiction books that I picked up from the library. This one is Empire of Cotton, A New History of Global Capitalism by Sven Beckert. I like learning the history and stories behind everyday things around us. Uh, cotton, you wouldn't think too much about it, but it has shaped empires and countries and it's a source of huge amounts of wealth and it's caused unbelievable suffering in the world. Not so much cotton but what people have done around cotton. I'm always like trying to learn new things and gain some more knowledge so I'm intrigued to delve deeper into the topic. Next one is Waste, Uncovering a Global Food Scandal by Tristan Stewart. Food waste is just this abysmal, just ta daily catastrophe that's happening in the Western world where like we throw away half of our food. So recently we buy food and then just basically put it straight in the bin again. And food waste is, is this awful epidemic. And there's places in the world where they really, there's famines going on. And yet we're just kind of like binning food. This world is, pretty much producing enough food to feed the entire world but it's not being distributed properly, it's not being managed properly, there's so much food waste going on and it's just, it's bad. Like from a humanitarian standpoint and environmental standpoint and just common sense, food waste is not a good thing. I'm looking forward to learning more about it, how it's caused and potential solutions that are happening. I know my friend Quentin aka Titi is um, passionate about preventing food waste. There's a running joke amongst uh, our friends that his favourite food is leftovers. Um, Quentin, you can explain yourself <laughs> out of that one. Next up are two sci-fi books that I actually own myself. This is Dune by Frank Herbert. It's the 50th anniversary one. I picked this up at last year's um, Young Adult Literature uh, convention. It's like one of the early and very well regarded sci-fi novels it's basically there's this spice that's the rarest and most valuable thing in the entire universe who controls this spice controls the universe it's so pretty it's such a pretty cover it's so pretty and next up is 
surface detail by Ian M. Banks. It's another culture novel series. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a massive fan of Ian M. Banks' works, particularly the culture novels. I've been sort of reading my way through them. I'm now on surface detail, which I believe, I believe it's the penultimate one. It's not really like a chronological series. You can dip in anytime you want. Um, I've just chosen to read them in order of publication date. A very brief summary of the culture, because I explained it before, it's set in this futuristic uh, civilization that are post-scarcity. It's basically run by AIs and drones and it's almost sort of utopian. Um, but there's a lot of like interactions with other universes and things like that. So it's really such a rich world and I really, really love it. So I'm looking forward to reading this next one. It's always like at least one really central, interesting idea um, that they really engage with in the books. So in Matter, it was based around um, artificial planets. Basically, this entire planet has been made artificially by this very ancient and now dead race. And like, there's like, it's kind of made up of like spheres as you go deeper and deeper into the core. There's a new world in this planet and it's such an interesting concept. It's so amazing. And with surface detail, um, a key thing about the culture civilization is that you can back yourself up, like back yourself up like on a hard drive essentially. And if you were, if your body were to die, they basically grow your new body and then implant you in, implant your backup in. So essentially you don't die and death is voluntary and optional and you can just die if you want to or you could live forever live for hundreds of years, put yourself in stasis for hundreds of years and come back. So it's just really interesting concepts about death and life and what it actually means to be alive and are you still alive if it's your backup that's been placed in. I've always got time for a culture novel. And the final thing in my TBR is this magazine called Scenario. This issue is based on Afrofuturism. In a nutshell, I don't know a huge amount about it, uh, in a nutshell, it's basically imagining the continent of Africa in a futuristic state. So we've been very used to sort of Western sci-fi. This is specifically set in Africa. Black Panther has basically been people's like gateway into the genre. I've seen the movie, it's amazing, and the aesthetics are phenomenal. So I've been really intrigued with Afrofuturism and so it'll be nice to like get into this one. I actually got this magazine through Stack Magazines, who are this company, and they basically send out really interesting independent magazines to you once a month. It's a subscription service, and I've got quite a few of their stuff now in my, in my little magazine box. Yeah. I really love indie magazines, so it's been nice to get like a little surprise coming in through your post box each month, and that's what I'm reading in May. Hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you are reading any of these books let me know what you are reading and i will see you next time bye